Hey guys, welcome to Pellets and Pits. Hey, today is all about America. It's our 4th of July special, and nothing screams special like a 4th of July Weber Kettle style barbecue chicken. We've asked, you guys have answered. Barbecue chicken sees it stand out like way above the rest. We did a homemade barbecue sauce. We added some wood chunks. We showed you how to use a Weber 22 inch kettle. It all came together fantastic. Watch how we knocked it out of the park. All right, to get started, let's talk about two American iconic classics. We sent out some fillers. We're like, hey, what are you cooking for the 4th of July? It seemed the one thing that dominated the conversation, barbecue chicken. So I'm gonna announce that barbecue chicken might be America's favorite when it comes to 4th of July. This is the idea. We got a homemade barbecue sauce we're about to whip up, but today's video would not be what it is without another American classic. Number two on the list, the standard 22 inch Weber kettle. You guys know that I love my Webers. This is what I grew up with. I bought this thing myself, so Weber did not send this to me. The idea of this video is, this seems like this is probably gonna be the number one used grilling equipment across America. Not means that you don't have it, but I'm just saying in general. And obviously King for Charcoal uh, is probably, you know, unanimous when it comes to briquette style cooking. So this is how I grew up. The reason why we got the kettle is not necessarily for the 4th of July, as much as it is, we're gonna start a brand new series. The new series is basically me arguing with you. Okay. I have my opinion, you have yours. I have a Weber Summit charcoal grill. That's before Weber changed the name to Kamado. Okay. I'm gonna relate how you can do the same thing off of this grill and how similar this grill is to our Summit charcoal grill. Okay. Uh, we have some great modifications we can use. Uh, the two zone system, which is basically our number one go-to no matter what grill it is. And I'm just gonna show the features of why I think when I get called out and say, well, that's not a kettle. Well, it's not a Kamado either. I can tell you that right now. So we're gonna do that. And I think it's gonna be a fantastic series. Head to heads, we can do like the same meats of how we've done the ribs and uh, just show you how to work these. Cause I think a lot of people can relate to a standard kettle. We could produce some really good food off of it. With that being said, let's start the barbecue sauce. Let's start the kettle and let's get that barbecue chicken knocked out. In the pot it goes, everything goes. Vinegar, ketchup. We will have the updated recipe listed in the description along with the barbecue chicken recipe on pellets and pits. And how you spend your 4th of July is up to you, but we're gonna go ahead and start knocking this out. I'm gonna add about a little bit of here, a little bit of there. Add that in, so now we got a little bourbon homemade barbecue sauce. One thing about this one I can tell you right now is we like it vinegary, we like it a little heat and a little bit thinner. Um, it's not as sweet, so I would take this as a base and adjust it the way you like it, right? If you like it sweeter, you can always add brown sugar, molasses, uh, cane sugar, something like that, but this is how we like it. So really quickly, we just got a three pack of thighs. I absolutely love chicken thighs. I wish the chicken had more than two thighs. All right, just trim those up just a hair and get the excess fat off. And to that, we're going to break down a chicken and just cut it in half. Nothing screams barbecue like a little barbecue seasoning. So we're gonna do a presentation side down first, get it seasoned liberally. Same thing now with this one. Hit that bottom side really good and just coat all the edges. Don't forget your tickler spots. <laughs> All right, since our barbecue is seasoning a little light on the salt side, we're able to get away with adding just a little bit more flavor. So it might look like a lot, but trust me, it is not. That looks good right there. While the seasoning is sweating into the meat, let's start that brand new 22 inch Weber kettle.
If you see here, we're working our two zone system. We're working a pretty hot fire today. We've got unlit coals and lit coals. So this is gonna be able to breathe over and start catching these coals on fire. And what this does, it creates an area for you to get that hot food off of the hot area, if that makes sense. You don't always have to like go hot and fast. Um, moving your food off the intense flame will help a lot. All right, so what we're gonna do now, although there is a thermometer on your dome, I'm gonna take a uh, thermometer like this right here just to help us gauge it. Of course, this is gonna read grade level where your cool spot is at. Since the fire is on that side, obviously this thermometer right here is going to be extremely hot. And then I'm going to be able to have that heat come up over and then escape here. If you had your lid going this way, then the heat just comes right out of it. It doesn't really create a good um, circulation. Oh, that makes sense. Learn something new every day. Please. All right, so from here, we can adjust our dampers. And this is the series that we're gonna get into when we talk about how similar this is to the other one. I know for a fact, uh, if I get down here, I'm gonna go somewhere through like right there. It's got the same P-trap setting on there for the, uh, for the vents. And from here, although a little bit different, cut that down to about right there. All right, so our temperature over here is roughly about 420. If you notice here on the ThermPro TP27, it's roughly about 352 uh, degrees. You can see right there, okay? So the reason why that's important, especially when you're dealing with a kettle, a lot of temperature fluctuation, which is fine, but you would like to have like that secondary information for you. Plus, you can take this, turn it on, go to your couch, and you can monitor it from there. How lazy can I be? All right, here we go. I have some post oak wood that we're gonna put in there for some flavor. Facing the thighs right now towards the fire. That's the hottest spot. And then we're gonna tuck these thighs in over here out from the fire and then we can rotate as well as the fire burns we're going to be able to uh, move our grate system around all right last thing is just a, another thermometer can never be too sure um, it goes with the same system so now you've got your grate temps and your internal this is my go-to i've had it way before youtube even started and uh, that's how i used to do my kettle just like that so i'm rocking the internal temps from right here and i'm gonna go inside and enjoy a cold one Alrighty, roughly about 30 minutes later, uh, we're still managing that 331 temp along with about 150 degrees on the inside of the chicken. So this is the first time I've actually opened the lid up. Ooh, it looks good. Yeah, that looks like good chicken. So I'm gonna start checking the temps. You know, the good thing about barbecue or the one thing about barbecue is you don't want to start saucing too early because your sauce can uh, start burning. We're going to rotate these over because that's the cool side, obviously. Man, that looks like a good looking thigh. So let's start checking our legs and thighs. Let's see what we got here. So 140s, that's not bad. Breast, so a little bit lower. Oops. So we're just gonna rotate this now, like this. Since these thighs right here are almost done, we're gonna start basting those. So you said you kinda wanna make sure everything's ready before you open the grill. By closing the lid, we will be able to kill that fire right there and start smoking again. So we got our chicken basted. Uh, we'll keep rotating on that. Uh, just talking about similarities about that series that's gonna be coming up. Obviously the kettle is something you can't walk away from, but we don't really suggest walking away from the uh, summit either. Now the summit can hold the temperatures a little bit more efficiently. Um, and that's why thermometers are so important. So I've been like actually inside for the last uh, 30 minutes uh, with my 
remote thermometer and we've averaged a right around 330 degrees. Alrighty. Alrighty. There we go. I got used, used to the hook. So these two thighs over here are done. I'm just going to uh, dress them one more time. Give it, I don't know, three or four minutes. And then this one just hit the temperature so we can start glazing this one. And then when I take these two off, I'm going to glaze this one. We might as well, just because that's what we're here for, is barbecue chicken. Start adding barbecue sauce to here. If you notice, if you're using a gas grill or if you're doing open flame charcoal grilling where you, know, you don't have a lot of area, just be careful that your glaze comes on almost at the very end because that's what's going to burn on the grill with all the sugars and stuff. That is a winner of a barbecue sauce. Yeah. I have to admit, for my first attempt at barbecue sauce, it ain't bad. Matter of fact, it's pretty dang good, and we are going to make sure that we list that. I'm impressed. I think that's a dang good recipe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for my very, very, very first time, it's dang good. It's what we like. So you got your chicken thighs, you got your chicken legs, you got your chicken breast. Uh, right at the very end, I was able to rotate that grill around and just kind of keep it on that open coal. So that fat drained down on that fire and kissed it a little bit. A little armpit action right here. Tickle, 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 tickle. I know 4th of July is basically about people coming through the line and getting some food. But I'm telling you, you keep your chicken together like this. And this, I just think it creates a better finished product. Whew. And nothing screams barbecue like licking your fingers. Look at that right there. Mm. Mm. I miss my charcoal grill. <laughs> I miss it. I don't know if you can tell how juicy that is. Can you see the glaze? Yeah. Come on, tell me you can. <laughs> Put that in your mouth. Oh gosh, it feels moist. Yeah, I miss my charcoal kettle. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You can't deny charcoal and wood. I mean, maybe it's just because of where I grew up. Look at that right there. Look at my hands. Isn't that barbecue chicken 101? <laughs> That's good chicken. <laughs> the sauce is slightly spicy. So if you have kids, maybe leave out the crushed red pepper. I need to wash my hands. <laughs> I could be saying it wrong. Nostalgic. I really don't even know what it means. <laughs> it is nostalgic. Like your childhood, right? Yeah. Barbecue chicken. This is it. This is how we did it. Obviously a different sauce, different seasoning, but I love a Weber kettle. I love the charcoal flavor. So simple to use once mm. you master it. Mmm, that's good flavor. All right, guys, so there you go. There's our 4th of July special barbecue chicken done 101. You can do your breast, your thighs. You can cut up the chicken, however you want to do it. The barbecue sauce is on point. Taste as you go. Make it the way you like it. I could probably get away with adding even, even more vinegar. We might try that next. But the sweetness is there. We like our barbecue seasoning. It's about having fun. The most important thing is cook your chicken off the coals. Don't keep them on the coals. And then... Uh, wait till the later end part to be able to add that barbecue sauce so you're not burning the chicken. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that. Da, 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 da. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. And share it with your friends button. Peace. <laughs> you were just thinking about this barbecue chicken, honey. <laughs> you know, I had high hopes, but it was that's good. good. Yeah. Very good.